All right. So in this week, we're going to cover aggregations. Um, and, and for this week, the meeting, I thought we just kind of jumped straight into some examples because I feel like these are, are pretty pivotal. Pivot, uh, they're important. Sorry, they're important. And, and I feel like they're one of these harder concepts to kind of grasp because they come with a lot of kind of like nuance, like, um, and, and I've just found that, you know, historically people kind of struggle to grasp this concept of collapsing rows on each other and, and making that work and, and why we need certain things. So, um, you know, the, the book and other things might talk you through a lot of functions, um, uh, some of the different functions and and how they work it may also talk about you know null handling with these various functions which is also important um but anyways we're just going to kind of I, I thought for this meeting um we can just real quickly we'll keep it short um and we're just going to cover um some basic functions um in, in some some real examples and i use real loosely because we're using a fake database um but we can we can kind of use some of that stuff to to kind of just get a get an understanding. Um, and one thing I realized that I need is Sequila. So let me hurry and download Sequila. Sorry, I cleaned up my computer. And this is this is actually, I guess, interesting. So we can go here to our Sequila sample database. Um, and it kind of talks about how you can get it. So let's see if we can get it. It's available from here. So example databases, here's our Sequila. I'm going to download this zip archive. There it is. All right, I'm going to open a terminal. All right, and so now we can go back here to Workbench because I'm just gonna use this little shortcut. Um, so I can never remember the, the actual name of it here. So we're gonna say, I'm actually just gonna copy this, close this window and we'll do it here. All right, and then I'm going to say source. Sequila dash schema dot sequel and then source Sequila dash data dot sequel. And there we go. And that easy, we should have our Sequila database here. Perfect. All right. So now that we're back in business, let's use Sequila. All right, so, um, and I know I, I showed this in the quick buy video, but I feel like money is one of the easiest ways to kind of like go about this, and money and numbers. And so, um, but money seems to be something that we can all understand. Um, and so really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the, let's take a look at our payment table. So I'm gonna select everything from payment just to kind of get an idea of what's going on here. All right, so here's payment, and we can see a bunch of, of information here, namely this amount column. And basically what this table is showing is it's showing every time someone's had a transaction with our store. So whenever someone's had a transaction with our store, you know, they swipe their debit card, and basically we attach it to a rental, and, you know, it's when they pay. So there's a lot of different things we can do here. Um, you know, the whole point of, of SQL is is to kind of, you know, not only or really when we select data. And so when it comes to aggregation, we're, we're pulling out data, we're pulling reports. Um, and sometimes that data is to go into other systems. Um, sometimes it's for display purposes. Um, and sometimes it's for like, you know, actual like analytical reporting. And when we start diving into these aggregate function we start getting more into like the analytical reporting world it could also be to feed an application so for example you know if i have an account 
um, you know, a loyalty account, maybe it, it's nice to show, oh, how much money I've spent with someone, right? So, you know, if it's something that simple, I could say, you know, let's say that I'm customer ID one, I could select the sum of amount as lifetime spend from payment where customer ID is equal to one. You know, this would be a good example of like a test case. And you can see that our lifetime spend is 118.88. Um, additionally, we could see how many total rentals there are just by saying the count of distinct rental ID without even having to leave the table as total rentals. So 32 total rentals over $118. And you can kind of see where I'm getting to. So, and really I'm going to swap this because I kind of like my funnels um, is what I like to call them. So if I want to kind of see like the drop down economics is as, as an individual customer, you know, I'd say, okay, here's my count of rentals is my total rentals, my lifetime spend. But then I may want to say, oh, what's my average spend per rental? So I'm going to grab our sum of amount i'm going to put it over the total number of rentals we have i'm going to say average spend per rental so you can see that i've had 32 total rentals for a lifetime spend of 118.68 for an average spend per rental of $3.07. So basically every time I walk in that video store, I'm spending on average about $3.70. So that's an example for one customer, right? So, and, and this is pretty easy because we're aggregating it in, for, at a singular level. Like we don't have any other dimensions here. So I like to think about it as, um, you know, we have our metrics, which is in this case amount, and we have dimensions, which we currently don't have any. But a dimension is something that kind of breaks up in groupings, categorical, whereas um, metrics are, you know, values that we can do things with. So in this case, our metric is amount and we're doing a bunch of different things. Also, we're creating a metric out of the total count of rentals so we can see how many rentals this customer's had. Um so anyways, we don't have any like real dimensions because we're just pulling like singular stats for, for me, my customer. So that's kind of one example. So let's, let's take this to the next level because we want to start getting a little more analytical. So let's, let's pretend we're looking at a perspective of maybe the business owner or an investor, something like that. Um, you know, we may want to pull some certain information um, at, at various cuts, right? So let's say we want to look at this by a monthly level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the year and month from payment date, which we should have in here. So payment date. So I'm going to select the year of payment date as fiscal year. We'll call it fiscal year. Um, I'm going to select the month name. Month. And actually, let's do month. And you know what? Let's say I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's do month name because we want it to be like January, February, right? Like something a little nicer. Payment date as fiscal month. And then let's get the, the same thing. So we're going to get the um, total rentals. So I'm actually going to take and copy these same metrics and we're just going to put them right here. And I'm going to say from payment. Now, if I were to run this right now, it's actually going to give me an error. And if I do this, you'll you'll notice it says down here, it says um, in aggregated query without group by. Um, because basically we've we've wanted to kind of like roll these these records up. And and you can imagine, so like if we did this, you know, we could do this manually, like we could find the months and, and roll them up, you know, in like, for example, if we're looking at July, we'd take all of July's records and we'd sum the amounts kind of like what we do in Excel. We, but, but the whole idea is we're taking many rows 
and we're turning them into one or, or less. We're taking many rows and we're combining them into one. Now we know that we can't just combine rows and let the, you know, cause there's many different ways we could combine these rows. We could combine it by customer ID. We could combine it by staff. You know, I want to see the total sum by customer ID, the total sum by rental ID. Um, so there's lots of different ways. So the way that we kind of tell the database how we want to distinguish these things is with the group by clause. So we say group by, and really it's just as easy as throwing in whatever dimensions that we want. So in this case, fiscal year and fiscal month. Um, so what I'm going to do is MySQL, I believe, allows us to do it just with the alias name. So we're going to try that. There we go. Yep. So there's our fiscal year and our fiscal month. And you can see here we have some weird kind of data going on because we have August, July, June, May of 2005. And then so May, June, July, August of one year and then February of another. So just like a weird sampling of data. So let's say because we want to ex exclude this gap, right? Um, we want to take out 2006. So we're going to add a where clause and say where um, the year of payment date is less than 2006. There we go. So let's take out that weird, weird piece of data. Now you'll notice that we have like this month thing going on. So let's try to order this by the month. So we're gonna order by um, fiscal month. Now the problem is that because this is an alphabetical column, a varchar column, it sorts it alphabetically. So really what we need to do is we need to add a, what I consider to kind of be a helper column. Because um, even though we want to display the fiscal month, we need to order it by the other. So um, let's try this. Um, so yeah, we're going to do, whoop, we're going to do month payment date as fiscal month number. All right, and you'll notice as soon as I added that, it tells me that there's something not in the group by clause. And so we need to just add that fiscal month number. And there we go. And now we can tell it to sort by fiscal month number instead of fiscal month. And there we go. So now we can see each month and some metrics. So for May, we had, you know, just under 1200 rentals. Um, and instead of calling this lifetime spend, we're gonna call this um, revenue because now we're looking at a different scope here and average and we're just going to call this revenue per rental, rev per rental. Because right, these are these are the metrics that we decide, you know, oh, we want to track these metrics. So in May, you know, just under 1,200 rentals, um, total revenue of 4,800. So you can see that our rev per rental is 4.17. And it dips down in June which is interesting because rentals went up. So that means our, um, you know, more people rented. What's interesting about these metrics is more people rented cheaper movies in the month of June. Um, you know, and, and this is where it kind of becomes fun, at least for me, because A, this is the the world I live in is this kind of stuff. Um, but it becomes interesting to me because it says, oh, well, maybe there's a pattern. Maybe, um, there's certain seasonal times that people are renting cheaper movies. You know, we know that movies kind of come out in waves, the popular ones anyways, you know, people kind of like to target holidays is when movies come out. And so, you know, we could probably see that in data if, if we, you know, had the data to kind of show it. And then you could, you could make estimations and budget planning and staffing decisions all off of this data. Um, Cool. Um, so, so yeah, basically we're taking many roles, many rows and we're rolling them into a few rows to kind of like 
or really aggregate. If you look up the word aggregate, it means to kind of roll up. And speaking of roll up, there is a, there's an option in MySQL to kind of do a roll up. And let's take a look here at the PowerPoint slides. Counting, yes, 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 because it'll talk about various things. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So there's this option that we can say with a roll up. So what I'm going to do is go back here, group by. So MySQL has this option to add this with roll up clause. And what this does is it uses our, basically, it creates total lines for each kind of segment. So you can see here that anything with a null ends up being like the total. So our grand total in all is this one, you know, 2005. That's why these two rows are the same because we only have 2005 data. But you can kind of see, so like August already has some, um, you know, is already one to one. Um, so basically it'll talk about how you can roll it up um, and, and we can choose how to kind of roll that data up. So like I said, because like August, July, and June, May, you know, we don't need to roll those up and show a total line because we, the total line is already there. Um, just because we have the fiscal numbers where it gets a little weird with that. So um, basically we just want to roll up certain ones and we really just want to roll up um, the year and let's say really just the year. So we're just going to roll up the year. Let's try it. I'll be honest, I don't use this roll up very often. So we're just going to just going to kind of play this by ear here for a minute. OK. It says we have an error. So let's try. Um, ah, that that's the Oracle database. Okay, so this is one of those things that MySQL doesn't allow us to do because it says if you use the Oracle database, the syntax is different. This allows you to perform rollups on a subset of columns without having to process them all. So it seems like that's something that's kind of left out of MySQL, which is unfortunate. Okay, so I guess we can't do that, but we can do the with rollup, which will roll them all up as we saw. Um, but as you can see, MySQL being a little, little inhibited, um, not quite sure how useful that is. All right. Um, any questions thus far? Okay. So I'm going to take this one step further because there's. Um, and this is, well, let's see, because I think we get to this later and I don't want to over confuse here. So let's go to the exercises for this week. I just want to make sure that we know what's in here. So let's preview this. Okay, count the number of payments made by each customer. Ah, so one thing we haven't covered yet so now we have our total um, kind of months in here. Now let's say we want to filter and only see months where we had over 3000 rentals. Now this is easy because we can just kind of pick that out, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So because we've already aggregated this, the where clause comes runs before the group by, right? Because it, 
took out all the stuff that's 2006 before it adds it up. And so the having clause is for after we've already aggregated. And that's why it's nice that it comes after the group by clause because it kind of helps me remember. So in this case, we can say, you know, having a total rentals that's greater than 2000, you know, we want over two, or what do we say, 3000? Let's say greater than or equal to 3000. And you can see that it cut it out, the, the ones that don't meet those criteria, simply based on the, the aggregate number. So if you want to filter on an aggregate value that we have in here, you can use the having clause. So it's kind of like, okay, we get this from payment where this equals this. We're going to group it all up. And then we only want to see those having a certain condition. That's kind of how I remember it. So that's on this question three, have at least 40 payments. You could filter it that way. I couldn't remember if you'd like tapioca pudding or rice. All righty. Um, I think that's all. Um, like I said, you'll want to make sure you know how the null functions work, which it will talk about in the reading. So I won't get too in depth there, but um, does anyone have any questions? Um, like I said, kind of wanted to keep this week a little shorter. Um, it, it, I, I think like the overall concept of aggregation gets a little bit more confusing, but actually in practice, at least the, the workload this week is, is actually less. Um, so I think once you kind of understand that concept, things get a little easier. So does anyone have any questions? Everyone understand the concept okay? I'll take the silence as a good sign. All right, got a thumbs up, perfect. All right, cool. Um, well, that's all I had for, for this week. Um, just as a general kind of housekeeping, at this point on your final project, you should be working towards your test cases, your UI map and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's okay to kind of go back and make adjustments um, to your, your model. Um, if you ever need to, you can always generate another ERD. So feel free to use your, your script to kind of make those changes or whatever works best for you. Um, but otherwise, um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but good luck this week and talk soon. Thank you. Yes, thank you.